Hello there, I'm artist Aaron Rutten, and in this video I'm going to show you how to make a composite of a real picture frame and a piece of digital artwork using Photoshop CC. So let's go ahead and get started. I have this image open here, which is a photograph of an acrylic painting that I have in a real picture frame hanging on my wall. I want to take this frame off, remove the artwork, and replace the acrylic painting with a piece of digital artwork. This might be useful for publishing your work on Etsy or just showing people what it might look like in a real picture frame if they decide they might want to buy a print of your work. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to remove the background here. So there's a lot of different ways we can remove the background and I have several tutorials on how to do that so I'm not going to do the long explanation here. We'll just select the magic wand tool. We'll click to select the background. It's best to photograph your artwork or your frame on a solid background that's easy to remove and make sure the lighting is nice and even. So I made sure that I had a nice bright light when I took this picture. If clicking once doesn't select the whole background, you can hold shift and click on multiple areas to select more of the background. You can also change the tolerance, which might give you a better selection. This is working pretty good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click down here in the bottom of the layers palette on the mask icon to create a mask. I'm gonna click on invert so that we're masking out the background, not the picture frame. And that did a pretty good job. I might not have to do much else to this. If you do need to refine your edge, if it's not getting the whole background, you can click on Mask Edge, and then you can change the view to something like Overlay. That'll show you what's getting masked out. And you can shift the edge if you wanna bring the edge in more or move it out away from the piece. You can also turn on Smart Radius if you have a complicated edge, and Smart Radius will kinda of get in there and all those little cracks and stuff. So you just want to increase that slowly until you start to see a good result. If it's not working for you, don't bother using it. And of course you can smooth the edge and feather it and so on. I don't think I need to do anything to this edge. It's a pretty good selection already. So the background is removed. Now if we want to replace the background, we can add a new layer, drag it down below the artwork, and let's just name this. So we have the frame layer and the background layer. We don't need this mask anymore, so we can right click on the mask and choose apply layer mask. And we'll go to the background layer and let's fill that by going to Edit Fill, and you can fill it with your foreground color. I have white chosen here, I think that will work. And we have a nice clean background, and if we want, we can save this with or without a background. And the next thing we'll wanna do is straighten out the frame, because it's a little crooked. I was shooting this photo probably at a little bit of an angle. So we'll go to Edit, Perspective Warp, and then what you wanna do here is just click on the first corner, let's do the top left, right on the corner, and drag to the opposite corner on the bottom right. Make sure that you get these corners lined up pretty well, and then drag this dot to the other corner, and do the other one as well. So try to get it as straight as you can. Then we want to click on Warp up here in the top left, and we want to click on this little grid icon here. It's going to align everything perfectly on both sides. We'll click on the check to commit to that, and now our frame is nice and straight. And let's get rid of this piece of artwork in the middle. I'm gonna use the rectangular marquee tool to very carefully select just that artwork in the center there. And I'm going to click on the mask icon in the layers palette, click invert, and now the artwork is gone. Now let's go ahead and place in a new piece of artwork. I'm just gonna drag in a piece of artwork from one of my folders here. I'm gonna choose this fried egg and of course this egg is wide, not tall, so we can just take our frame and I'm gonna hit Control T on my keyboard to enable free transform. That's also available from the edit menu. I'm gonna hover around this corner till I get this curved line icon and I'm going to rotate my frame. I'm gonna hold Shift to lock it horizontally. Click the check to commit. And let's move the artwork down below the frame and reposition it. If we want to resize the artwork, we can hit Control T to free transform the artwork and hold Shift and Alt together to scale it down from the center. We'll click the check to commit. Scoot it around just a little bit more to center it. Let's crop off some of this excess background. So I'm going to select the Crop tool and I'm just going to drag this top down here and the bottom up. Then we'll go ahead and group the frame and the artwork together by selecting both layers with Shift and then I'm going to hit Control G to group them. Now we have a group called Framed Art, and if we want to move that group together, we can go ahead and center it up like so. And now if you want, you could go ahead and just stop and leave it like this, or if you want to try to make it look a little more realistic, we can add a few more effects. So let's take a look at how to do that. Let's go to the egg layer. 
Let's add an effect down here at the bottom of the layers palette for inner shadow. That's going to add a shadow that's cast from the frame onto the artwork. You can change the distance, increase the opacity. You want to try to match the light angle to the light angle that's present in the photograph of your frame. So you can see there's a big bright spot here. So the light's probably more or less coming from this direction here. We'll click OK to apply that. And if we zoom in really close, we can see it adds a little bit of a shadow there. Let's add a new layer above our artwork and we'll call it lighting. Let's set the blend mode to multiply. We'll select the rectangular marquee tool and we'll draw a selection around our artwork. We'll go ahead and fill that with a dark blue color. I'm going to use Shift F5 on my keyboard or you could go to Edit Fill. I'm going to hit Control D on my keyboard to deselect my selection and I'm going to add a mask to that lighting layer. I'm going to select black and my gradient tool. I'm going to set it to a radial gradient and then starting from my light source and dragging outward I'm going to create a sense of lighting and I'm going to reduce the opacity of that layer and do it before and after just so I see a little bit of difference in lighting because you don't want the lighting to be completely even on your artwork but different on your frame. Let's add another new layer here and let's call this texture. We want to fill this with a specific color so I'm going to double click on my color swatch here and I'm going to choose a neutral gray. We want to set the B here under HSB to 50%. That'll be right in the center. And then we'll use the rectangular marquee tool to draw another selection around our artwork. And we will go ahead and fill that with that gray color. Now if we set the blend mode to overlay, that gray color disappears, but if we add texture, the texture will show through. So I'm going to hit Control D to deselect the selection. I'm going to go to Filter, Filter Gallery. Choose the Texturizer category, and then choose Texturizer. I'm going to choose Canvas. I think that looks pretty good. I'm going to click on OK. If we zoom in, that adds a little bit of canvas texture here to the artwork. If the effect is too strong, you can reduce the opacity of that layer. I think that looks pretty good. It looks like a real print inside of a real frame. So if you want to save this with a background, you can save it with a background. If not, turn off the eyeball. That hides the background, and if you see these checkers, you know that this is a transparent background and that it won't print or show up white if you use this image elsewhere. And to save it without the background, we go to File, Save As, and we'll go ahead and start by saving our composition as a Photoshop PSD. That'll save all of our layers. That way, if you want to reuse this later, you can. You can even swap out the artwork for other artwork. Then we'll go to File, Save for Web to save a copy. So it's important to note that you want to save as a PNG because JPEG does not support transparency. It'll always add in a white background. So select PNG 24, make sure transparency is checked. And then if you want to change the size of your image, you could change it here if you want to make it smaller. And then go ahead and click Save to save a copy that you can then publish on your website or Etsy or anywhere else. If you found this information helpful, take a quick second to like this video and share it with your friends. And if you're new to my channel, click the subscribe button to get updates when I release new videos. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next Thursday for another Photoshop tutorial.